traveler known as Molotov Alva kept a video diary which showed how he uploaded his entire life into an online world, then vanished. This is his story. In the first installment, he spoke of leaving his old world behind and preparing for his second life. In this installment, he confronts the limits of his new silicon-based world. And so my life here began. I think it was Albert Einstein who said, reality is merely an illusion, albeit a persistent one. So if this new reality was an illusion, did its persistence depend upon me? To my eye, a city here was not a real city. A street was not a real street. Even walking wasn't really walking. This was a place where nothing was what it said it was. Even I was a fabrication. In this new world, I could stand on a beach. But could I taste the salt hanging in the breeze? Feel the sand crunch beneath my feet? Dip my toes in the water and shiver from its coolness? All that I saw and experienced relied on memories I had from my other life. This place could only create an approximation of a beach. It was up to my mind to do the rest. But what would become of this place after my memories faded? After I could no longer remember the world I'd left behind? Without memories to give them shape, would this cheap facsimile of a city, this pixelated mountain, this digital palace be enough for me? Or was it that after my first life memories were gone, I would no longer miss what I'd lost? But then I realized, the world I left was also composed of imitation objects. My leather sofa hadn't been real leather. Nor was the non-dairy creamer in my coffee. Nearly everything in my old life was counterfeit, made to resemble something else. Why should this new place be any different? Real, virtual, in time I could no longer tell the difference. I even came to believe that the builders here worked in symphony, together, subservient to some divine, invisible plan. But I was wrong. There was no rhyme or reason to this place, no uniting principle guiding the builders in their creation of our shared habitat. It was chaos, evolution gone haywire. Yet the haphazardness of these constructions somehow made sense. This was life in a virtual boomtown. As for me, how did I want to live? Within a city's protective walls? On a desolate beach? High up in the clouds? Because in this place, the land, the water, even the sky was for sale. So where did I ultimately reside? The answer wasn't that simple, especially since I now lived in a world where changing my address was as simple as deleting one life and clicking to install another. Which is to say I moved, often, whenever the mood took me in my early restless days. As for furnishings, I had the finest designer objects one could own. But did I need all these things? Wasn't my life here becoming as cluttered with useless objects as the world I just left? Since I no longer needed sleep, did I need a bed? And since I didn't eat, my kitchen, my dining table, served no purpose either nor did I need an office. To be honest, everything in this house was ornamental. Harmless, I told myself. Or was it? 
I suddenly realized something. The new home I'd created was dangerous. It was trying to make me nostalgic for the life I once had. The life I'd come here to escape. So I got rid of it. My life here needed to be different. But what did that mean? Maybe I needed friends. But could I find them here? Or was I to remain as alone in this world as in the one I just left?